Hello, all you reinventors. This is Leslie Jane Seymour, and I am the founder of this podcast and of CoveyClub.com and all things reinvention, restart, reboot, rethink, reimagine. Put your RE word in front of anything that means get going, and that's us. Um, Karen Amster Young is a strategic advisor for communications agencies, an author, and a journalist. Her work has been published in the New York Times, Insider.com, Hamptons Magazine, and many other regional and national media platforms. She's also the author of the nonfiction book, The 52 Weeks. Um, and she shares stories and gives back to various causes. Karen and I met a long time ago when she was studying how to get unstuck. Um, and that's largely what's in her book. Is She's done a lot of research and done a lot of interviews about how, why people get stuck and how to get unstuck. So that is what our conversation is about, is how to get unstuck. And how is it different today than it was, say, 15 years ago? Um, what are the tools that we have that are available to us that maybe weren't available in the past? So here we are with Karen Amster Young. Karen, wonderful to have you on the podcast. It's been a long time since we were able to play together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. And um, so let's talk a little bit about your history. I always like to start there before we talk about how to get women unstuck and your reinventions. Um, talk a little bit about where did you grow up? And um, I grew you know, up in yeah. Rock, Rockland County, mostly, um, uh -huh. which is a, a northern suburb in New York, as many know, and uh, basically was there until college and then moved into the city, New York City shortly afterwards and have not been, I've been here ever since. So. Ah, and what did you start out doing? Well, I was at Citibank in communications. Um, Citibank. And then, Citibank. Um, okay. <clears throat> it was definitely more technical communications, but I kind of spun it because I knew I wanted to do public relations and marketing even before I knew what it was officially all about. Um, so then I landed at Ketchum Public Relations, which is a very large agency that's still around. A lot of my mentors are from there. I still speak to a number of colleagues that you know I went through Ketchum with, but really great agency. So they set the foundation for a lot of my future endeavors. And what were you doing for them? What kind of stuff? I was in the business to business group, everything from product launches um, to message point development, um, assisting clients with going on TV back in the day and all the um, media training. And they just gave me a great foundation. They're a very strategic agency. So I kind of used what I learned from them and then launched my own agency, Amster Young public relations from 90 something we're going to be dating ourselves here oh my goodness for, for about a little over 12 years i built the firm um had employees and um it was exciting i think one of the great things about starting a business when you're in your late 20s or mid 20s is that you almost don't know all the challenges the naivete is is good because you just kind of you know, dive in without any fear. Um, right. A lot of people, a lot of people lose that later on, just because life is life. Um, so I eventually merged with another agency, took some time off, and then um, went on to other things. Wrote the book, which is, I believe, well, we had been working together, I believe, in the media world, you and I. Um, but then also we connected. Probably that was probably the second time we we connected when my book launched and more right. magazine. Um, was uh, I was honored to be a part of your very, very famous uh, girls' night. What was it called? Girls' night out. Oh yeah, girls' night out. It was that great. Was fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. My, my co-author and I have good memories from that evening. I remember it was at a beautiful hotel, and yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Um, you became well known when you were at the helm of more for that event. Um, right. So it was really an honor. Very exciting. Um, so we're going back to two thousand. 13, 14, when, right. so we're, we're the 10th anniversary of the book, which is, the, oh my God, incredible about getting unstuck and reinvention. But you're, you're the, you're the person who created the word, I believe, but it, you know, it's, an funny. Ever, it's an, it's an evergreen thing for everybody to constantly struggle with um, the successes and hurdles that you face in life and how to get unstuck. 
it doesn't it doesn't change every decade you you may have some curveballs and you have some wins and you have some losses and how people deal with that is unique for each person so let's talk a little bit about that let's talk about getting stuck why do people get stuck why do you see women over the age of 40 get stuck what are they getting stuck on and um how are they getting stuck well, first I want to say, I, I know it's more women who are over 40, but I believe every decade. I have a daughter who's 23. Yeah. You, have, you know, I believe that you can get stuck at any age. Um, okay. I, um, but it's particularly, I think people become a little more paralyzed or fearful as they get older. So some, and they've already been through life and they have both the wisdom as well as the uh, anticipatory anxiety of kind of getting knocked down again. So you get, which is why I was referring to starting a company in my twenties and the, and the, the lack of fear um, at that mm. time. So, but you might have a hurdle in your twenties or thirties, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's, I chose the wrong career. I just got out of law school and now I don't want to oh, a, a lot lawyer. of those. Yeah. A lot, I hear those. a lot of, I see a lot of lawyers later on switching <laughs> careers. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just the, the, the chair is um, That's kind of no scraping. Worries. Okay. Fine. Don't I guess worry we'll, about it. We'll edit that one out. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. totally fine. Dogs so anyway, barking. But after, whatever. after 40, um, you know, there there are so many times you have to reinvent yourself and it can be paralyzing. Uh, right. You know, sometimes you don't know where to go. So the best place to go is nowhere and to sit and date yourself and be by yourself. Um, since the book launched, I've had certainly hurdles like probably many others. I've gotten divorced after a 28 year marriage and 30 year relationship. Um, my mother passed away as many in our age group are losing parents. So these are all times that, and, and there's been, of course, wonderful successes. I'm not trying to, you know, it's just part of life. And I think we all have to figure out when it's okay to slow down and just be with yourself and try something, even if it's so hard. I remember feeling very stuck at one point in my thirties and anxiety, anxiety ridden about whatever, which is not unusual for me. So uh -huh. my, um, my therapist at the time to be real said, you know, just go on the treadmill for 10 minutes. And if, if you still feel that way, then go back to your house, you know? And what happens is, is once you do that 10 minutes, you're like, all right, I can do 15, I can do 20. And so it's these baby steps that I think are so important. Um, and it also depends on your makeup and you have to know yourself what makes you anxious, what makes you um, feel confident, feel good. Um, one of the greatest things, and please stop me if you want to interject, but one of the greatest things as scary as the time as the pandemic was, and people went through such hardship, so I'm not minimizing that, including myself, but it gave us all a time collectively to kind of stop. Yes, and, I and agree. I, and I discovered, and, and it's a shame it took a pandemic, <laughs> but I revisited things I had always wanted to do and not had time to do. And painting right. has stayed with me. I started painting and it was because I couldn't see oh. my mom because everybody was in isolation. And it was because, right. so it wasn't, like I said, I'm not minimizing how difficult that time was for everybody. Like, oh, I had time to paint, but it was therapeutic. And right. as a right, I'm a writer as well. I had mentioned before, I'm um, a freelance um staff writer and contributor for many newspapers and magazines in the New York area, which has increased in the last 10 years. I love doing that, but I couldn't string two words together. Like, mm -hmm. so I said, okay, art, right? Even if it looked, many of them look like finger paintings. I think I'm getting better, um, but that is sticking. And, and after my divorce, I'm like the romance of Paris. I was always wanted to learn French, but listening to myself talk French with my New York New York voice. I, I couldn't even listen to myself. So I decided, so that's an example. I still am drawn to all things French and I might be able to read a menu a little bit better, but I said, all right, this is not going to stick. You know, this is not happening. I love the language. I love the idea. I think I love the idea of learning French more than actually learning French, but I was trying different things to keep me distracted. Um, and I think so hard to sometimes do that, but I don't care if you order a puzzle on Amazon, you just have to keep doing new things and try, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard. It's hard to get out of bed sometimes for people, you know? Right. Um, what but, are, what, I mean, do you have a system for helping women get unstuck? Is there, is there actually, you know, are there steps? Is it, or is it purely just 
you have to figure it out for yourself? Is it so individual? Oh, yeah. First, I want to say, Pam Godwin and I, my co-author, again, um, we always laugh that we were writing a book about this because we're we're not experts at all, um, which is why we brought in 10 experts to the book. Um, everybody from a, and one of experts in quotes, some were truly experts, doctors, et cetera, wellness right. people, right. and others were comedians talking about the importance of laughing right. um, and friendships and relationships. And, you know, so interviewing those people, almost like a journalist and including them in the book, Right. I, I learned. And I think what we bring to the table is more of the relatable. Oh, my God. Like she just she's like, hopefully she's like my sister. Or she's like my friend. Um, and she is somebody that I can relate to. But I am by, I am not a life coach. I am not a um, person I can provide. Granted. Tips and yeah, yeah granted. But what did you but what did you learn from all those people? I'm not. You know, I'm not saying yes, that you're the I expert. Learned to, you, yes. What did you learn about getting unstuck? And so that, you know, like, what are some tips and tricks that you learned so that people who are listening, they they want to know, like, what can I yes, do? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm going to repeat the baby step when you feel okay. paralyzed and, and there's the mountain seems so big. Take one step towards that goal. Um, well, a lot of the people we interviewed talked about that. Um, writing it down, making it making it real, announcing it to your roommate, your partner. When you commit verbally, sometimes, you know, it really kind of, you feel almost accountable. Um, so it, it's, you're more likely to be successful. It's also important not to put too much pressure on yourself and be so hard on yourself. January 1st, I, I swear to God, I joined the gym January 1st. Okay. No, I, I forgot everything that I said 10 years ago in the book, uh, never joined a gym on January 1st. You could start any of your New Year's resolutions any t any day of the week, any season. Um, I re really laughed at myself because it was like something you do when you're like younger and you're like, oh yeah, you're not going to fall for these promotions and ads that you get in your inbox in December. And there I went. Um, so that was, you know, just a reminder. Also going back to things you loved growing up, I think is really important. Yeah, um, yeah. I always, it, there's a little bit of a risk in that though, because I was one of, I wasn't good at a lot of things, but tennis was my game. And um, I've always played tennis, but honestly, my right knee has been killing me. And right. everybody would, you know, and I'm like, everyone's like pickleball, pickleball. And I have oh a fear. God, okay. everybody's so into pickleball. So, so let's talk about, a, I have a fear of pickleball. Okay. Because okay. in my mind, when, you, if you were excellent at something, and like I said, not many things, but it's very hard to say, not only accepting aging, but it's very hard to say, I'm going to go to pickleball when you feel like it's a second choice from tennis. Gosh, yeah. So interesting. My husband has that problem. He can't even get, because he was a real, you know, he was a real athlete. And now he can't, he just can't even get out. He won't even get out there, which I think is silly. It is. But and I'm not I'm finally, mentality, I'm, you know. I'm probably the last person that's going to give in to the whole pickleball thing because it's so <laughs> Right. Um, it doesn't involve martini, which is always a step in the right direction for me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, it at least, um, I probably will be good at it because there are probably similar, I've heard there's many similarities, yes. with some of the eye hand coordination and stuff yes. like that. And I guess my knee will thank me because, um, right. My when the last time I, I played tennis with girls, you know, one co in our fifties, one of them comes out with an elbow brace, one of them comes out with, you know, I come out it's with the knee different. brace. So we, yeah, it's different. So, it's but, different. Yeah, but getting back to revisiting things, it's another tip. Go back to things you loved, or like I said during the pandemic, things you've always wanted, were drawn to, things that fill, make you happy. I notice when. I'm working too much, like this is, I guess, for many women and men, when you're working too much and you're not taking time to do the things that really make you feel calmer, whatever that may be, um, you can burn out and you feel, yep. you don't feel as well. Uh, I also recommend just, you should, I think friendships are so important, long-term female friendships. Mm. Um, it's hard becoming single after many, many years of, of being a partner, regardless of if that marriage was good, bad, indifferent, you know. Um, so it's, you know, you reinvent, talking about reinvention, you have to reinvent yourself, whether it's right. the passing of a parent who you used to see every weekend, whether even if you should be single, uh, getting used to not being, you know, part of this couple world that a lot of people are in. Um, 
and, and just stay positive. Um, always admit when you need help. Um, I think people struggle with addictions and habits. I, I know for a lot of women, they were drinking more during the pandemic. Um, and some of that has remained for, for many. Um, so it's about getting those things under control and saying I, moderation. You know, you don't have to, you know, give up everything that, you you know, just everything moderation. Um, but it's not it's not about beating yourself up. It's really about taking um, steps to create. You're the only one that's responsible for your own happiness. And right. you realize that more and more as you get older, um, you know, and, and doing what you need to do. I, I think there's a there's a f evergreen messages about getting unstuck and reinvention, which is why I want to bring back some of the, the content of the book in much more smaller snippets because the original book was, you know, long narrative. Nobody oh, has that I see, I see. No, and oh my God, no, that, no, they don't have No them. one has their patience anymore. No, 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 Everything no. is like going to be distilled. Lines. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where it, we are. Yeah. And we had only Facebook back then pretty much. Right, right. So it's a whole new universe. Um, and but but if people can get those little affirmations that they need and you know right. and laugh and get a little inspiration to try something new um, or revisit something old, then I think we're ahead of the game. You know. So one of the things when you talk about you know actually announcing it out there and putting it out there, and we do know the research that says that if you do that, you're more likely to do it. I think a lot of people are embarrassed or they're shy, or they're uncomfortable saying something that seems far-fetched at the moment to say, you know, I want to be, I'm a, I'm a lawyer and I want to be a cheesemaker or something. And people are going <laughs> to be like in your family, like you're out of your mind. You're completely crazy. Um, what do you see? I mean, we know that that's important. I mean, that is one of the reasons why I created Covey Club. So you can come to Covey Club with that announcement and no one's going to say you're crazy. They're going to say, how can I help you? But in your current group, how do you get up the nerve to not feel like people, you know, because you're going to get pushback. But that, so they're not like going, God, you know, mom's really lost it. She's, you know, <laughs> she thinks she's going to be, you know, uh, vice president of the United States, like, who, like what is going on here? Right. So what is that? What have you seen people? Cause we do know that that sharing it, but, and women in particular are afraid to share because they're afraid. Of I think failing. you get, I, I think you get less each decade, decade that goes by, you start okay. sharing less and less about what people think. True. Um, true, um, true. So I think, I think the fear is higher, let's say in your thirties about people's reactions right um there's still this mentality of wanting to be i mean everybody wants to be liked and loved and all of that but there's still right. this mentality of um what's their reaction going to be right. and it's so funny you know you get older and you start caring well hopefully um but a whole I lot less a whole lot less about right. what people think what their reaction is in a place like your uh, kavi um is incredible because you actually get practical advice. And from what I've been following on everything I'm following about you the last few years, um, practical advice, support, connections, all Correct. of those things are really, Correct. really important. Um, but I would just say, well, at 50s up big, late 50s, um, it really doesn't matter. You, at the end of the day, you have to be happy. If you say something with confidence, you're going to make it happen. When I was right. moving right. from a one office office space and I signed my first lease, I remember people were like, it's a little big, right? Like, and, and when you have something, a space to fill, you fill it. Like you have to look at it like that. It's just like even one of the doctors for the book was saying that you can't feel scared or sad if you actually smile, even if it's a fake smile. So the actual brain, it's something with the brain chemistry. Yes, it's yes, not, correct. Yeah, there's something to be said for that. Correct. So, um, you know, I had a, still don't love flying, traveling, things like that. How do you get through that without, you know, being unconscious on the plate from, from any medication? So taking those steps, knowing your fears, doing rituals, all those things. But in terms of career reinvention, I mean... You only, you know, you go around, you have to try the things that if you're doing what you love, the money hopefully will follow. 
I've um, always found that. Yeah. Me too. Um, there's there's going to be people that drive you crazy. There's going to be times where you have to say, this is a hobby. It's not a career. Um, right. It's not. Right. And and there are times, I've, I've had a hard time letting certain things go that I thought could be a successful business. Um, right. It's very hard. It's like a baby. It becomes like a baby. Yeah. Um, but going back to school for those, like I'm more like an entrepreneur personality, right. but right. going back to school, just taking one class, it, it yeah. just one do- it all opens other doors. So yes. even if you can't go back for your law degree, you're right. in a class with people that you never met. And so That's that right. person can lead to your next girlfriend or boyfriend or. Right. Right. Really yes. Crazy. And I, yeah, I believe, I mean, that is another thing we say at Cubby Club where we talk about being lifelong learners. And I feel like if you're always curious about the world, no matter how old you are, if there are things that interest you and now with, you know, our ability to research anything where you you can get a master's degree on a weekend just by studying whatever it is that is of interest to you. And then you take a course and then you get out there and you meet other people. I I find there's a, there's a downside, Leslie, I think too. Yeah. Tell me. The world is just so fast right now. I think people yes. have a tendency to be beating themselves up because it is a 24-7 world. And you can't. Ah. So establishing boundaries, saying that, like, I had to work on this because I laugh, but I can't sometimes. I'm a writer and I'm always on the computer, which means when I relax, I often, like, want to binge a show rather than read. Right. Because I'll, I'll literally be reading a book. And because I love the written word. I'm underlying right. sentences that I think are brilliantly written. <laughs> and, and people will silly see me at the pool doing that. And I'll say, Karen, what are you doing? You're always kind of working. Like well, sometimes that's not you, work for you. That's well, it, it's not, but I should just be reading the book, interact passively as a reader instead uh-huh. of, which is, well, it's, it's just a different, I just think my point is it's okay to just have hobbies. Like we were talking about career reinvention. Something should be just for pleasure. And there, yes. and I think the world with the social, the amount of information coming in, the unsettled world that we're living in, in politics and world, the world climate, it's even more important to say, okay, yeah, I want to reinvent my career. And to get there, I might have to sign up for that class, but I also need to sign up for yoga. I guess. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So so still finding that balance is much harder than when my parents were raising me and my sister. Correct. It was just slower. Everything was slower. Right. You know, and if your personality is kind of like type A, then, you know, you're in trouble if you don't learn how to manage that. Right. So what are you seeing as the opportunities then for reinventing yourself in this new world? What are the the actual advantages of trying to do it now versus say oh, 20 God, or 30 fle- years the, ago. The flexibility, the mobility, uh, you know, my daughter who's 23 is in her first job. She's the exception. They require her to be in five days a week in person. Most people, even at a college, even at entry level or have two days a week that they, they can work at home, which, um, I think it's great because it creates work-life balance. If oh, you're dis- can if you you're- imagine? Oh, oh I wish... All those, I, that's the I, one thing I, know, I feel jealous I about. Oh my God, Me it would too. have changed my life. Oh. And if you're, if you're, if you're conscientious, conscientious and disciplined yes. a yes. person, yes. you're going to get your work done. Um, of course. Even at that yes. age. Um, I right. do think they're missing out with some of the camaraderie by working. So if, if somebody's right. working mostly remotely in their twenties right. and thirties, those critical right. years, like you and I came right. up with right. that, there is a there is a loss there too. So hopefully there's a balance because you want that corporate culture a little bit, you know. But not too much. What else no. have you seen that's valuable? What have you seen that people can actually take advantage of to get unstuck today? That perhaps- oh, to get unstuck. Um, yeah. Oh my God! Virtual, you know, virtual consultations about any topic from A to Z. Um, so many people are dealing with mental health issues. So there are people who don't want to leave their house and they can get online and get coaching. And um, you could speak to career coaches, of course. So all the technology has its benefits that we're all very aware of. Um, you know, you can also dabble in a new hobby or start um, on Babbel to learn a new language instead of right. signing up at a class. Right. So, th- I mean, there's all these things you could be doing without going very far. Uh, right and can make you feel mentally better and, you know, and physically in many cases. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I think it's an I think it's an ongoing thing. Reinvention. If you get stuck, it's okay. You know, if you get tangled up, tango on. I think Al Pacino said. So uh -huh. yeah, one of those movies. So uh, so. I think it's um, important to continue to look and say what's really making you happy and what people in your life you want to keep. And I don't mean that in a cold way. I mean, I think there are people, we have all different friends, all different reasons. Right. Some friends, um, so, you know, a good, there are great friends that you really just want to take a walk in the park with and there are a friend that you call and you want to cry on their shoulder, you know. Right. Um, and But there are people who are, bring you down or don't support right. you and love right. you the way you, you know, um, that maybe you have to reevaluate as well. So right. who you, who you surround yourself with is really important right. where you spend your time, you know, family traditions. I find like creating new rituals is so critical. Um, even if your status change, even if you're a widow, a widower, divorcee, you know, um, your kids are grown. And so have how, you know, start traditions with friends and family. I mean, with friends, Thanksgiving, whatever it may be, you know, yeah, that's one great thing. You know, there's ways to create new rituals and traditions that could stay with you as you go through life. Um, and you need them the most. Mm -hmm. So we actually, I do, I do agree with you that I think because there's so many opportunities available today, even though things move really fast, um, that you getting yourself unstuck either mentally, you can get the mental mental health counseling that you need. Right. If you need education, it's coming to you in a thousand different ways. You don't have to get a master's degree and show up someplace every day for something. There's a like a thousand different tentacles towards making you move. And, and sometimes taking that first step can be the hardest. You know, yes, take yes. one class, make right. the phone call, make the right. appointment. Um, I still need encouragement sometimes on certain things I'm without getting into detail that I'm scared about. Um, right. You know, you always say you're ultimately in control. So make that appointment. And right. guess what? 99% of the time, it's an, an appointment that you can reschedule if you really need to. Hopefully you right. won't, but at right. least it's in your calendar. You know, so th those are things that are they're tough for people. People get really scared. Yes. And you know, and, and one technique that I've found to use when it's something like that I find sometimes I can't do that thing myself, right. but if I call you and I say, Karen, can you, can you make this call for me? Can you make that appointment for me? I'm happy to go, I, yes. but I have some kind of barrier and I haven't been able to dig out my personal barrier against that thing. And so that's, that's another way to get around stuff that sometimes- I mean, that's the importance of great friends and or right. a sister or a brother is to- Sometimes you need your hand held and that's okay. Right. You, know, you should not, you know, I tend to be hard on myself about it, but you eventually get to a point where you just accept that about yourself. At least you know you're doing it. And there are right. other times, like for something else, somebody else may need their hand held. And I'm thinking to myself, not in a critical way, wow, that's one thing I, I really don't need my hand held on. Right. But right. I'm, right. I made, so right. We need a different, different thing. Right. Each of us right. needs a different thing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I just think that continuing to educate people, um, make them know things are accessible, go yes. to events like your organization has where you feel like you're not alone, where it's yeah. not crazy. It's not crazy to say because we are working in a, in more silos these days. Right. So that in person interaction, I think, is so important to balance out the okay, great, I can get on this Zoom call and get my 45 minute therapy session or whatever it right. may be. Um, right. So I, I'm hoping there are more and more, I th it's already happening. I mean, you know, it's almost like the pandemic never happened, but it's not just the pandemic, it's the technology available that are making people not do as much in real life stuff. And it, so it's not a fear of crowds anymore. That's old news. It's, it's more like, oh, we got used to this and we have these tools so we don't have to attend. But I think showing up, just show up. It's really important to show up. Yeah, I think showing up physically today is something you need to push yourself to do. It's so easy to not. Right. Um, it's so easy to not. And yet there is something extra you get by being in a room. There's electricity. There's 
a physical warmth, people hugging and shaking your hand. And yeah. we know that all those things are really, really vital for keeping you mentally healthy, physically healthy. Right. But we have less and less of that kind of contact today. And I think one of the ways we get stuck is we get comfortable. We get com- It's easy to get comfortable at home in this remote environment. And it is. you're it not- is. You know, if you're not an uber extrovert like me, I have to get out there and get that energy. If you're at all introverted, you may, might be really hard, right? Absolutely. Giving back is really important. I don't want to forget to say that before we run out of time, Um, especially for women who, you know, they've had a successful career. They don't necessarily want to reinvent their careers, but they want to reinvent themselves or be out there like we're talking about. Yes. Um, one of the doctors also for the book said, you know, there's actually something in the brain that by giving back, just giving, you don't, it, is, it, it sets off like positive energy um, in your brain. That's very And helpful. dopamine, you get a hit of dopamine. I, I could have yep. worked. Yep. Um, so it's not about a paycheck. It's not about getting another degree. Right. Um, it's, it's about using your expertise in a particular area or just handing out food at a soup kitchen but yes. um like for me myself i use my marketing and stuff um for a couple of foundations and it's really important to me because i'm using the expertise that i've gleaned over the years in that world to bring in to raise funds for something i'm passionate about um right. but but you can just do anything um, clean up a, i mean pam and i early in the before the book even came out, we were like, all right, let's go to the park and clean up the park and see, you know, or whatever. We were on the Upper East Side and, you know, you meet people and you, our kids came to help us. And, you know, there's something to be said for that. So great. Um, awesome. So, Karen, where can everybody find you and follow you? And is the book out there still? Can I? Well, find I don't, it I don't really leave my apartment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so just just come to my apartment. I'll I'll post the address later. Yes, I'm on, I'm on uh, my website is KarenMsterYoung.com. It's still, of course, a work in progress, but there's a lot of background on there. I'm on Instagram as K um, Young Wright, as in W R I T E. Um, LinkedIn is a good one. Facebook. Um, I'm on some single dating apps now. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. I'm getting okay. around. Swipe. Right. I'm, I'm doing a lot of swipe lefting. Left swiping. Good. It okay. took me about a year not to swipe in the wrong direction. So see, that's that's something, learning a new skill. Learning, learning how to a use new it. skill. We're all learning. <laughs> Wonderful. Karen, thanks Thank so much you. for your time. I had fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you for joining us on this podcast. I hope it was helpful. I hope you took some tips and tricks home with you. Go pick up her book. You will find a lot of information about how to get unstuck. And if you need more help with getting unstuck, check out coveyclub.com. We have tons and tons and tons of information about how to do that. We have checklists. We have guides. Sometimes we use the word reinvention. Um, Plug that into the site. You'll get tons of free information about it. Also, what we have learned is that when you are struggling to make a change, it's often helpful to do it together, which is why we have the Covey Club, part of CoveyClub.com, which is a group of women who have decided to get together to help each other make change in their lives. And we do that through everything from speed networking to small little pods where we get together and work on things from elder care to writing, to podcasting, to being an entrepreneur, to personal reinvention, career reinvention, whatever it is you may need to do, to our regular weekly classes with experts. And now what we have for you, if you're a new member, you actually have to join, is the Covey Club Academy, which is the um, area on the site, which has contains 400 pre-recorded classes with experts around the world who can teach you everything from how to get on a board to leadership skills, personal branding, social media, whatever you need, um, it's there. So come join us, get on our newsletter, go over to coveyclub.com and hit the newsletter button in the upper left-hand corner and um, come join us. And you're gonna learn a lot. You're going to not be alone. And I think you're going to really enjoy working on your rethinking, rebooting, reinvention, whatever you want to call it.
and also follow this podcast. Um, it's important that we have stars from you and we also have reviews because that's how other people find us. Um, and pass it along to anybody you know who's struggling to make change in their life. We would love to help them. So thanks a lot. Bye.